So you're thinking about moving to Dayton, Ohio. Well, think again. It's not all Buckeyes and Bengals in the great state of Ohio. I wanted to do this video for people who are relocating into the area. Like most of the folks we work with, they're coming from out of state, just like myself. And I thought, who better to do this than yours truly, right? I moved here from Texas. Uh, when I came here in 1999, I went to Ohio State, which is in Columbus, and I met my wife there, um, who was originally from the Dayton area. Hence, we're here now, we're close to her family, and we've been here since 2001. So we've been here over 20 years, and I can talk more intimately about the Dayton area now and provide a better perspective. Obviously, when we moved into the area, we had different needs than we do now, but most of the folks that are moving into the area, the people we're working with, I know that are looking for specific things as it relates to you know buying a home and raising a family. And so in this video today, we're gonna talk about some of those things. In fact, we're gonna talk talk about five of those things that I think it's important for you to know prior to your move to Dayton. So let's dig right in. Hey, if this is your first time on the channel and you want to know everything there is about living in Dayton, Ohio and the surrounding areas, make sure and hit that subscribe button below so you can be the first to learn about the current market here in Dayton. My name is Mike Wall. My team and I get calls and emails every single day from people just like you looking to make the move to Dayton. We absolutely love it. So whether you're looking to make a move in the next nine days or 90, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or even schedule a Zoom call in the link below. We'd be happy to help you make the smooth move to Dayton. All right, so let's jump right in with Number five, uh, and number five is, this is unfortunate to say, because I live here and I do love this city, but there's just not that much to do in Dayton, unfortunately. You know, again, this is all perspective, right? We talk about perspective. My wife is from Holly, Michigan. She moved here back when she was in middle school and she thought this was New York City, right? And that was her perspective. And I moved from the Dallas-Fort Worth area and my perspective was this was just a very small city and there wasn't that much to do. And it is literally small in that most of the people live outside of the Dayton city limits. In other words, they've transitioned into suburb type living. And uh, and like my wife and I, we enjoy the amenities that are in, um, excuse me, around Dayton, Ohio. And I think that will be um, your experience as well. Doesn't mean that we don't like to visit downtown Dayton every now and then. There are some really good restaurants down in the Oregon district that we love to visit, but we just don't do it very frequently. It's not a good place. You live out in one of the suburbs to venture out to that you're gonna wanna have a drink and then get in your car and drive uh, because you're potentially looking at a 20 uh, to 25 minute drive back to your house. So being in downtown Dayton, you could probably in three months experience most of what downtown Dayton has to offer and be set. And so when you're coming from a bigger city, again, like a Chicago or a Dallas or, um, you know, uh, a New York City or an L.A., it's going to be a lot different because you're used to going downtown and there just being a ton to do. Right. And, and a lot of places to go, a lot of different places to choose from to have a meal. And it's just it's not that way in Dayton. Now, the good thing about Dayton is the fact that we are about 45 minutes from Cincinnati and there's a ton to do down in Cincinnati. Of course, that's where the Bengals play. That's where the Reds play. Uh, there are a lot of good um, steak restaurants down in the Cincinnati area. And there's just a lot to do, especially in, in downtown and northern Kentucky down there. Um, and then also the proximity to Columbus. It's about an hour and 15 minute drive into downtown Columbus. And of course, we're very proud to be Buckeyes fans. My wife and I both went to Ohio State and we love going to Ohio State games still today. And there's just a ton to do in Columbus, that university. There's a lot of growth in that area. And you've, you've really seen businesses come in and invest into the Columbus area. And so while there's not a lot to do in Dayton, there's a ton to do in both Columbus and Cincinnati. And they are short drives, I guess, in my estimation. So again, downtown area, I won't complain about it. It's just not some place that my wife and I frequent because of the amenities that we enjoy out in the suburbs. And so that's my number five reason. Number four is the property taxes. The property taxes in Montgomery County are ridiculously high. And, and usually you get what you pay for, but if you live in the Dayton area, um, we don't find that to be true. Um, the, the, 
the school system on the state's report card uh, rated very poorly. Um, the local government um, certainly has a lot of work to do. Uh, I know a lot of people, especially um, out in the suburbs, aren't really excited about what the local government down in Dayton is doing. Um, so, you know, the property taxes in, in Montgomery County um, compared to like a Warren which is where I live, which is where Springboro is, um, or a Beaver Creek, which is in Greene County. In some area, the taxes are almost double uh, what you would pay um, out in, in those counties. And so be very mindful of that, especially if you're coming in from out of the area uh, or an area where your taxes are low. The taxes in Montgomery County are very, very high. And you'll wanna be aware of that, especially if you're buying a home here, because that can affect the amount of, of your monthly payment. And that's obviously, that will affect the affordability of the house you buy. So, so keep in mind when you're buying in Montgomery County that your taxes will be higher than if you are in one of the outlying counties like Warren or Green. Number three is the weather. Um, and again, it's all perspective, right? If you're moving here from Chicago, Illinois, um, your weather um, is probably very similar to what you would get in Dayton, Ohio. Quick story, you know, I'm a transplant. I moved here from uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area when I was about 19 years old. And I remember catching a flight uh, to Columbus, Ohio, and um, I was excited. I was, I don't know, I had, was experiencing all these different emotions at the time. Obviously, I was 19. I was leaving a lot of friends behind to come to a new area to go to school. And um, so I was excited. I was optimistic. I was scared. Um, but I do remember flying into the Columbus airport and looking out the window and and just seeing nothing but white. Remind you, I'm from Texas where it almost never ever snows. And I can remember thinking to myself, oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into? Um, because I was not a big fan of the snow. Now that's not true today, I do love the snow. And one of the great things about Ohio is we do experience all four seasons. And snow is great, especially around Christmas time because it creates that nostalgia, right? The white Christmas nostalgia. That's something you can enjoy, especially uh, if you have a family here. Uh, but the weather, the, the bad thing about the weather is it's really both extremes, right? Um, you get the heat of a Texas or of a Florida. Uh, you get the humidity of those areas um, because when it's hot here, it's, it's ridiculously hot and humid. The other extreme is the cold, right? So November, December, January, February, and even sometimes into March, uh, you're getting extreme cold weather and it can get you know below zero degrees here. And it's just not a time that you'd ever want to be outside or, or, or um, or be you know be, have, be doing activities out out in uh, out in the cold. Um, so the weather is, is one thing you'll definitely want to keep in mind uh, when you move here. But there are ways to work around it, right? And we've obviously been able to do that. We've been here for 20 years, um, so we've found ways to deal with the weather. I think one of the things about Dayton uh, you'll find is, and, and this is really a byproduct of, um, this was for years and years and years an, an automotive town. You know, most of the local economy was built around our GM plant here in Moraine, uh, which was at one time one of the largest employers in the area. They employed thousands and thousands of people. In 2008, you know, the, the economy collapsed, the auto industry collapsed, um, and Dayton was hit, you know, right in the face um, with that collapse. Um, GM actually closed their plant where they built the Chevy Blazer here in Moraine, Ohio, and, um, you know, thousands were left jobless. And certainly that affected the housing market here locally where, you know, um, people lived and worked. People, you know, moved out of the area in droves and there was a lot of vacant housing around here and the housing market was collapsing at the same time. And so what happened was after that, after that move is that um, many of the houses that were abandoned are now, let's say what, you know, 20 years later or 15 years later, these are, these are complete eyesores now. And if you go into the downtown Dayton area, just outside of, uh, of downtown, when you start getting into some more residential areas, you'll see that a lot of the housing there is actually condemned, it's boarded up. Uh, many of the homes are slated to be torn down. In fact, there are so many homes right now in downtown Dayton that are slated to be torn down, they can't even get to them. I think there's a three year supply of homes that need to be torn down. Um, just because they've, you know, you know, they've not been cared for. And so obviously that's near and dear to my heart because I'm a real estate agent, I sell houses for a living. Um, but it is, uh, 
it is not pretty when you drive into the downtown area um, and you see, you know, uh, houses that were built in the early 1900s um, at one time were absolutely beautiful, had a ton of character, and those houses just are complete eyesores and they're falling apart now. So, yeah, it's a big deal when you come into an area and, and you have expectations where, you know, maybe the city you come from, they take really good care of the housing there. Uh, but again, it is a byproduct of what happened here in our local economy when the market collapsed. So that's the number two um, reason that I think you need to um, consider uh, living uh, maybe around in one of the suburb type areas uh, versus down in the city where you can avoid some of that. All right, so here we go. Reason number one. And this one's a little more difficult for me to talk about because I understand how far downtown Dayton has come over the last five to seven years, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. And it's all perspective, right? You can look at it through the lens of my wife who moved here from Holly, Michigan, where there's one stoplight and the best restaurant is a Dairy Queen. Or you can look at it through my perspective. I've lived in some really nice cities. I lived in Austin, Texas for nine years. I lived in Dallas, Fort Worth. Um, and we know in those areas there are a lot more people. Um, however, there's a lot better culture. There's a lot better restaurants. There's a lot better entertainment. And so um, when you look at it through my lens, uh, the downtown area here in Dayton still has a lot of work to do. Um, and my biggest complaint, if, if, um, if there are any, is that fact that um, while there has been some improvement over the last five to seven years, and when I say improvement, I mean investors have come in, developers have come in, restaurants have come in, there's more entertainment, the Dayton Dragons are downtown, there's some breweries and nice restaurants. Um, the challenge or the problem is that um, it's only nice in pockets. In other words, you can be in a pocket of Dayton that's really, really nice um, and you feel safe in, and then one block over or walk to your car, you can be in an area where there's dilapidated buildings, the windows are boarded up, and you just don't feel safe. So I think this will improve over, over the, the coming years. Um, however, we're just not there yet. So. You know, my number one reason um, or the number one thing that you should be cognizant of when you move to Dayton is the downtown area. Because if you're a person that likes the feel or the ambiance of being downtown um, and you're from one of the bigger cities, this may be a point of contention for you. Okay, so there you have it. Those are my top five negatives to consider before moving to Dayton, Ohio. Hey, keep in mind, Dayton is still a great place to live, work, and raise a family. My wife and I have lived here for over 20 years and we've enjoyed every minute of it. Don't wanna scare you, but I do want to educate you so that when you move into the area, and hopefully you will call us, that you'll be able to make an intelligent decision about what area of our great city that you choose to live in. Hey, keep in mind, we take calls, emails every single day from people just like you looking to make a move into the Dayton area. And so whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or even schedule a Zoom call in the link below. We'd be happy to help you make the smooth transition to Dayton. Thanks again for watching.